Hi, I'm Mike Stern with a favorite passage from Dickens that we're sharing as part of the Dickens Project's Dickens to Go series. The passage is from Bleak House. It's a short one from near the beginning of chapter 16. The third person narrator starts off describing Lady Dedlock's ennui at Chesney Wold and her London townhouse, then segues to a description of Tom All Alone's. That's the ruined street, caught up in the endless chancery suit of Jarndyce versus Jarndyce, where Joe the Crossing Sweeper lives. Here's the passage. What connection can there be between the place in Lincolnshire, the house in town, the mercury and powder, and the whereabouts of Joe the outlaw with the broom, who had the distant ray of light upon him when he swept the churchyard step? What connection can there have been between many people in the innumerable histories of the world, who from opposite sides of great gulfs have, nevertheless, been very curiously brought together? One of the key formal innovations of Bleak House is its dual narrative structure. The story alternates between the sardonic, knowing voice of the third-person narrator and the innocent, uninformed, first-person voice of Esther Summerson. The other triumph of form is its pioneering invention of the roman policier. Bleak House is a detective story in many senses. There's the whodunit part, of course, who killed Talkinghorn, with the relentless Inspector Bucket solving that mystery in inaugural police procedural. But there are many more mysteries in the novel. Who is Nemo? Why does his handwriting startle Lady Dedlock? What is the meaning of the documents that Crook finds in his rag and bottle shop inventory and haltingly spells out one letter at a time? How is George the fencing master related to Mrs. Rouncewell, the housekeeper at Chesney Wold? What's going on in Mr. Snagsby's shop? and in Cook's court. What is the secret of Esther's past? And above all, as our passage asks, what is the connection between the many seemingly unconnected places and people in the teeming world of the novel? The promise of the detective story is intelligibility. What, is, what at first is unknown, confused, or deceiving is learned and decoded. Seemingly unrelated facts and events become clues, Clues then point to a solution, and the mystery is eventually solved. The social order endangered by crime is restored. This promise is both fulfilled and denied in Bleak House. As readers, we are detectives too, learning as we go along. We start out befuddled, like Mr. Snagsby, or Joe, who is in, quote, utter darkness as to the meaning of those mysterious symbols, close quotes, that is writing, that surround him. As the story progresses, we learn how the many characters in the novel are indeed connected. Esther is Lady Dedlock's illegitimate daughter. Nemo is her father. George is Mrs. Rouncewell's prodigal son. Crook's documents are Tom Jarndyce's real will. And Hortense killed Talkinghorn. But Dickens wants to teach us much more than how to solve a murder mystery. The ultimate connection between, quote, the place in Lincolnshire, the house in town, the mercury and powder, in the whereabouts of Joe the outlaw with the broom, unquote, is the dual epidemics that also structure the novel and which make it so resonant in our own pandemic times. The smallpox that originates in Tom All Alone's and spreads its death-dealing miasma throughout England is the tangible embodiment of the moral plague of greed and heartlessness that also besets English society. And for this, there is no neat solution. The ray of light that falls from heaven onto Joe in this fallen world cannot overcome the smoke and fog permeating London in the novel's masterful opening passage, which presages the death of the sun itself. Esther and Alan Woodcourt must retire from the fallen world to the new bleak house just to survive, while the telescopic philanthropists, right reverends and wrong reverends, arrogant young snobs, lawyers and chancery clerks, vain aristocrats, ruthless landlords, and hard-hearted workhouse masters fret and chafe and make their usual uproar. For this knowledge, there is no forgiveness and there is no answer. <laughs>